The Serpentine, one of Ninjago's most iconic foes and a massively important piece of its history. In this video, we'll be taking a look at every Serpentine minifigure ever made, from 2012 to now. Everything from the Hypnobrite of a Million, Pyro Vipers to Core Snakes, and the giant snakes that have accompanied them too. These cunning snakes made their debut in 2012 as Lloyd Garmadon unleashed the five tribes upon the world of Ninjago, with the Hypnobri, Fangpire, Venomari, Constricti, and Anacondri. The first tribe released were the Hypnobri, blue and grey snakes with the power to hypnotise anyone they like with the rattle of their tail. Rattler is the low level warrior of the tribe, distinct from the others by using a regular minifigure head with this awesome cobra hood attached to the top. His face of course being blue in colour with fangs and hypnotic red eyes. I really like how it lines up with the blue stripe on his torso and hood, which from the back also has a small tail moulded into it. Rattler's hood can also be used on Lloyd too, to recreate that time when he snuck into Ouroboros in the world's most authentic serpentine costume. In 2012, Rattler got a yellow spinner with Hypnobride details printed on it and a purple snake crown on top. This actually came in two sets as well, those being the 2012 starter set and the spinner battle arena, both sets containing cards for the game, featuring one character card and four game cards. Mesmo is next and straight away you can see how blue has overtaken his colour scheme with much less grey than on Rattler. He's got a moulded headpiece with giant fangs sticking out the front and some great printing on the top. This head can also turn around 360 degrees as there's no tail locking it in place. He may not have got a spinner, but he was exclusive to a booster pack and as such he also gets his 5 cards, once again with ice as his primary element. After all, the Hypnobri were buried in the Wailing Alps. Slithera gets even less grey than Mesmo, while the yellow detailing is increased, with plenty of it over his awesome giant cobra headpiece. The tail on the head covers up some back detailing, but it's nothing overly fancy. Still, a great minifigure who did get a transparent blue spinner and spinner crown to use, as well as five cards of his own. Scales is of course the general of the tribe, with more blue and yellow than any of the others, and almost no grey. He's got the golden Hypnobri staff collectible weapon and shares his head with Slithra, but the detailing looks much better in my opinion, as does his back printing. He also has the big serpentine tailpiece instead of legs, with a hard plastic lower body and a softer material for the rest of the tail, which does make the colour a tiny bit different. This figure doesn't just represent scales though, because in episodes 1 and 2, the Hypnobri general was actually Slithra, and perhaps that is the reason that this is the only serpentine general minifigure to have been available in multiple 2012 sets, rather than an exclusive to one, so you can have scales and Slithra, and then scales and Slithra. We also get vipers with all the tribes. For the Hypnobra we have trans blue and dark blue. These snakes can not only represent juvenile tribe members, but can also be held by minifigures to be used as weapons. We'll see some other colours of this piece later on. In 2021, two new Hypnobri were added to the collection thanks to Legacy, as we get a brand new Rattler and Mesmo. Rattler switches the grey colour scheme he had before for sand blue, but his head is still dark blue. It's very different to the original, but that's good, it adds more variation to the tribe, and despite lacking print on the hood, it still looks great. As does Mesmo, who is more similar to the original figure than Rattler, but is still different enough to provide good variation. You can also tear him apart and create Mesmo Jr if you've got the pieces for it. This figure was exclusive to the 2021 Temple of Celebrations set, while Mesmo also came in the Legacy Ultrasonic Raider. Adding them to the original figures makes the Hypnobri feel more like a force to be reckoned with. Next to the Fangpire with Venom that can turn anyone or anything into a Serpentine. This was the only tribe that you can complete before the Sunwave release, as the Hypnobri, Venomari and Constricti all have members exclusive to the summer sets. We begin with Snapper, the white fangpire with a red stripe down his centre, mashing his head in much the same way as Rattler's blue. His hood is different to Rattler's, as its detailing is more like armour plating than a cobra hood, but it still has a tail at the end of it. Snapper came with a lime green spinner in 2012, complete with a red crown, and of course the five cards, with the fangpire naturally being fire elementals. Fang Shui is next, with more red than Snapper and giant fangs on his headpiece. I love how he has a necklace with giant fangs hanging on it too, and just like Mesmo, his head can also turn 360 degrees due to no tail hanging off the back. His spinner is red with a yellow crown which looks fantastic. Feng Shui also contains some cards with great artwork like Sensei's red card and Recharge. Fang Dan loses the tooth necklaces as well as most of the white too. The most notable part of him is that he has two heads instead of one, a really great piece that captures a rare condition that can occur in snakes in real life. Fangdam also got a spinner, this time transparent red with a transparent red crown, meaning that the Fangpire are the only serpentine tribe to have spinners for every single non-general minifigure. 
and of course he's got his cards too. Fang Tom the General gets the Fangpire Staff collectible with anti-venom that can reverse a Fangpire bite. As for the figure, it's now fully red with a white stripe down the middle, a complete reversal compared to Snapper. He's got two heads just like Fangdam, but the printing on them is different, and the serpentine tail piece looks really good in red. The colour difference between the hard plastic and soft plastic is almost negligible, unlike with scales. Then there's some white and red vipers too, who fit into this tribe nicely. Here's all four serpentine tribe stats with the Hypnobri, Fangpai, Venomari, Constricti. The latter two didn't come in sets with their generals, which is why I've put them all together here. As the second set of collectibles in the world of Ninjago, I think these were pretty fun. The stuff is the same on each one, but the anti-venom pieces have some awesome looking designs. The lime green Venomari contain in my opinion many of the best minifigures in this video, and it's also the biggest serpentine tribe too. Lasher starts things off, wielding the Venomari Fangblade, the second collectible gimmick related to the Serpentine. He's got the same hood piece as Rattler, just in green now, and I really like the red Venom models he's got hanging off his torso, and his missing eye showing that this guy has certainly seen some battles. Lasher's spinner is purple with a green crown covering the green Venom splats. His card also contains some nice artwork. Spitter brings more dark green and he's got all four of his eyes intact on his headpiece, the same one as Mesmo, meaning that it can also turn in multiple directions. His spinner is one of 2012's best, transparent lime green paired with a purple snake crown. And as such he's got five cards too, showing him in the desert. Lazaro the second in command comes with one of the best head molds out of all of the Serpentine, with extra teeth sticking out the side and spikes up on his head. He loses the Venom bottles we saw on Spitter and Lasher, but he still gets some red in his colour scheme, which I think really helps the Venomari stand out. The head can't turn though, as it does have a small point that covers up some back printing. He didn't get a spinner, but thanks to his booster pack, he's still got cards, showing him in a forest filling up bottles of Venom for other Venomari warriors to use. Acidicus the General is for me the best Serpentine minifigure ever made. Exclusive to the epic dragon battle and wielding the Hypnobri Fangblade, he uses Lazaro's headpiece with white spikes and much better printing on top. The dark green being contrasted with the lime green stripe and the red accents looks incredible, making for such an amazing minifigure, especially when you pair him with his staff. 2016 brought us three more members of this tribe too. First up, Clancy the Peg-Legged Sky Pirate, with orange armour covering one of his arms and an anachondri headpiece in lime green. The Summer Wave gave him different shoulder armour, but the figures are still the same. He's only got two eyes, because obviously Clancy isn't actually a Venomari, but instead a hybrid between two different tribes. Lasher is similar to his original figure, but he now wears orange armour and has a slightly different facial expression. Still missing an eye though. He's also got Venom bottles, but they're now stored on his back. Finally for 2016 is Zoltar, with a dark green anachondri head and sharing similar armour to Lasher. It didn't end there either, the Venomari returned yet again in 2019 with Lasher and Spitter getting legacy remakes. Lasher is now very different to the original, with the red bottles being changed for black bottles and a very different face print. Thanks to magazines, this is also the most common Serpentine minifigure ever released, coming in 8 sets. Spitter is much more similar to his original, as he simply reuses the same face print, but his torso has some differences. The Venomari had some green vipers and a trans purple viper too, which would work well as a baby anachondri. The orange and black Constricti came with 2012 Summer Set Wave, bringing us four more snakes to add to our army to smash through and crush anything in their path. Snike is our introduction, this guy only came out in one set sadly, that being the Samurai X Mech, which means not only did he not get a spinner, but he didn't even get any game cards, making him the only non-general not to have any. Choken is next, but he still hasn't got his giant ham sandwich. His colour scheme uses more grey than Snike, and as he shares Fang Shui's head, he gets giant fangs and a head that can rotate anywhere you want. Joken did get a spinner thankfully, a trans green one with a trans orange crown, released alongside NRG Kai in the weapon pack, and so he does get 5 cards for the game, unlike poor Snike. Vitar is tiny and has one of his eyes completely ripped out. I love this headpiece he has, covered in orange spikes shooting out in every direction, and covering up most of his torso. This time we see the Constrictor Fangblade, something he got in the Samurai X mech. No spinner for Vitar either, but his booster pack did give him cards, almost all relating to Earth. And finally for the Constricti, it's General Scalador, also exclusive to the epic dragon battle where he wields this giant axe. He shares Bitar's head, now with silver spikes, with an orange stripe running down his torso. Pairing him with his tribe staff looks good too. For the Constricti, we've got a trans-orange viper and a golden one. 
The final 2012 Serpentine minifigure is Pythor, the last remaining member of the Anacondri. Exclusive to the Ultrasonic Raider, he's got a giant head with his mouth wide open, and he wields the final fang blade. This time it's the Fangpires. His head can turn, unlike every other general, and the purple tail looks absolutely fantastic. The head covers some of his torso print, which features black and gold detailing surrounding a diamond in the center. He returned in 2015's Ninja DBX, now bleached white thanks to the Devourer. All of his black was turned purple and the purple was turned white. His old open mouth headpiece returned and he's also wearing the red anachondri armor piece, something we'll see again quite soon. We're not done yet because Pythor made yet another appearance in 2016's Samurai X Cave Chaos, complete with the Serpentine Departed Blade reusing the old snake staff in an awesome trans neon green color. The white robes he's wearing here are beautiful, easily making this the best Pythor minifigure ever made in my opinion. His head is the same as 2015, though I wish at this point they'd change the mold to have a closed mouth rather than open. And in 2019, Purple Pythor returned thanks to Legacy, quite a lot different to his original version, but on the whole still another great minifigure. It also still captures some of the iconic details like the blue diamond and gold accents within the black scales. That was it for Pythor until 2022, but we'll save that one for later. The four fang blades were used to release this, the Great Devourer. This giant green snake build was included in the epic dragon battle. It's got a tail built with ball joints giving it plenty of articulation, while the front of the body is static keeping it in an upright position. The stickers on the pieces to add detail as well as on the top of the head, complete with the weak spot. Giant silver fangs hang near the red eyes and the whole mouth can swing open and slam shut with space inside the mouth to gobble down on any minifigure you want. Let's use poor Lazaru as an example. Once she's done with the Lazaru, she's got the rest of Ninjago to consume. Coming back to 2015, Snake's returned with Chen and his cultists. Wait, these aren't Serpentine, why are we looking at these? Well as we all know, Chen was obsessed with turning his cult into Anachondrite, and he succeeded. Master Chen wields the Staff of Elements, and he has awesome robes topped off with a snake tooth necklace, much like the Fangpire. He wears this fantastic snake skull headpiece too, dual molded with a purple snake hanging over the top of it. While the cape covers up the anachondri symbol on his back. Klaus has dark red and purple robes with more anachondri details on his belt, plus bottles of venom strapped to his back, and a second face with green eyes. Izor is next, wielding the anachondri sword piece and wearing a snake tooth necklace as well. He's missing an eye and has the anachondri tattoo over his other one. He's the only cultist to get a legacy remake too which modernizes the figure both with the Anachondri symbol on their back. In 2016, Izor's Anachondri form was released as Izor I came in the Ultra Stealth Raider, but with legs instead of a tail. His torso is very different, but the head keeps his missing eye, so it is definitely Izor. Zugu wears the Anachondri armor piece with bones covering up the back printing. Taking it all off shows his torso, again covered in the snake tattoo. And now we can get a good look at that fantastic snake skull headpiece the rest of the cultists all wear. I love how the lower jaw is split open so that the skull can sit comfortably over their heads. And I especially love how the skull even matches up quite well with the Anachondri headpiece that was introduced in this set wave too. Chop and Kapow move up the ranks with armor printed on over their tattoos and once again using the skull headpiece. They both got Anachondri forms too. Kapow Rai matching perfectly with his original minifigure as the armor stays the same between both of them. Chop Rai though, they just aren't the same. In fact, this is actually Zugu Rai. The printing and armor piece make it a perfect match. The final figures are our generic army builder warriors, Sleven and Crate. The only difference between them is face printing, with Sleven's white detailing covering one side of his face rather than the top like Crate. These are still good minifigures though, but sadly we didn't get their anachondri forms. Of the anachondri we did get though, we can still form a small army of four, which is bumped up to five if you want to throw in Pythor, finally giving him his own tribe. 2017's take on snakes was very different, but also incredible. The Vermilion were the children of the Great Devourer as hundreds of regular snakes all formed together in armor to create terrifying snake warriors. Commander Machia being their leader. Her torso print captures the essence of the Vermilion perfectly, as red snakes crawl around all over, weaving in and out of her gunmetal armor. She uses Medusa's hairpiece to show what a Vermilion looks like without a helmet on, and her back print has more snakes crawling around too. The armor attachment she wears is there so that when you remove her legs, you can comfortably attach her to this weird base, making her much taller with more snakes crawling around in and out of it on the stickers. Commanders Blunk and Ragmunk are the orange vermilion warriors and their two different armor pieces are packed full of detail, with snakes on the shoulder armor and in their helmets. Taking all that off reveals their incredibly detailed torsos too, as once again snakes crawl all over the place making for some very creepy minifigures. 
Their armor was reused on all the other Vermilion Warriors, and as we'll soon see, despite only two unique figures existing, you can get great diversity with these warriors. Tannin and Slackjaw give us a good look at those unique figures. The only difference between them is Torso Print, which shows snakes crawling through different armor orientation on the front and back. However, thanks to their two faces, the first bit of variation can be seen straight away here. Then you can throw the armor back on, making two different versions of Rivet and then a Vermilion Warrior and Vermin. It's great that despite having just two actual minifigures for the main army, the combination of second faces and armor pieces allows you to build an army full of unique snakes, which is very much like the Urukai minifigures from Lord of the Rings, who again could be differentiated simply by their two face prints and a variety of different armor combinations. The inclusion of snakes in the sets as well as actual armor to be worn means you can use them to make some awesome and creepy displays, as snakes crawl around discarded armor ready to form a warrior. I love these minifigures as it was a fun and unique take on the Serpentine. The buff million from Dragon's Forge also shows the potential of these snakes as they merge together to form this giant, with snake tails used as fingers and four snakes for its head. This was another great addition to the Hands of Time sets, a massively underrated set wave in my view. We jump back to 2019 now, but not for Legacy, it's the Pyro Vipers, ancient Hypnobri who were thought to be long gone but reawakened by the Snake Witcher Sphera as she stole Kai's fire. Asphira, the golden snake with orange flames roaring out of her head and tail, looks absolutely phenomenal. The way the eyes glow when they catch the light at the right angle makes for an awesome spectacle. The torso print under the armour is also brilliant, with golden armour covering some bandages. She shares her head with Pyro Destroyers and Pyro Slayers. Theirs is in brown, and the only thing distinguishing them is the copper armour piece. Destroyers have one, but Slayers lack it, and as such give us a look at their fantastic mummified bodies with brown scales peeking through the tattered bandages and flames roaring out of their bodies, mashing with the head. Char is the black pyro viper, lightly charred with ash. His head is different to Asphira in the Slayers as it's thinner without flames roaring out the side, but it's still dual molded with trans orange allowing light to travel all the way through it, lighting up his eyes too. He's got some bandages under his armour, but most of his body has been unwrapped. His head is shared with the pyro whipper, another warrior for this ancient tribe, but the torso and legs are the same as all the other warriors. On the whole though, this is another fine addition to the collection. Long forgotten mummified Serpentine was a genius idea, and in terms of the figures we got, it did not go to waste. Asphira didn't just release her Pyro Vipers, but also the Fire Fang, another giant snake to attack the ninja with. The front has some hieroglyphs as well as chains to attach Pyro Vipers so they can pull the snake along. The tail can whip from side to side with a rattle in the end of it and stud shooters next to all of that. The whole body is covered with two giant plastic sheets as its cobra hood is consumed with fire. These sheets attach to the head, meaning that when it moves, they move too. The mouth can open up with a giant forked tongue sticking out. Sitting at the top is a throne for Asphira, with flags at the side that unfortunately don't stand up as well as they should. Still, she can sit right in the middle and command her Pyro Vipers from above, or from below as you can take the whole thing off to use elsewhere if you want. Another non-serpentine minifigure now, the Marae Guards. Yes, they're eels, but they use the Pyro Whipper headpiece and so I thought why not take a quick look at them. It's blue and black with no transparency this time unfortunately. It's still made for some good minifigures though, and it was shared by Glutinous the Scientist. 2022's Core Wave saw the return of actual snakes with the Cobra Mechanic and Boa Destructor. They were released in many sets with different combinations of armour, but ultimately there's just two figures. The Boa Destructor using gunmetal grey shoulder armour and orange eyes on the Whipper headpiece, taking his legs and replacing them with short black legs gives us the Python Dynamite version, which came in a couple sets. The Cobra Mechanic uses a head with gunmetal eyes, and he often wears an attachment that covers up his back printing. I'm not a huge fan of these snakes to be honest, there's nothing overly special about them, but they did bulk up the core set, so there's that. The final Serpentine release so far came in 2022's Crystallized Wave, with Asphira and Pythor joining the Council of the Crystal King. Straight away, Asphira's colour scheme is totally different to her original figure. Her head is now grey with pink crystal eyes matching the armour and the purple tail matching up with the torso. The eyes still light up well, but I do prefer the original figure. Pythor is another great addition to this collection though. His tail returns, now with armour covering his original 2015 design, and his head now getting pink detailing to show his crystal powers, using the same armour and torso as Asphira. And it's rather fitting that the man who reunited the tribes and was an important part of Chen's downfall should be the one to end this video. For now, Crystallized Pythor is the last Serpentine minifigure we have, but hopefully he's not the last we'll ever get. Whatever the future holds, the Serpentine will always be a huge part of Ninjago history and are one-off if not the greatest villains this theme has ever had.